The FFS2000 is a fusion splicing workstation which is capable of performing all steps of the splice process. Strip, cleave, clean, splice, recoat and proof test. This video will discuss how to use the workstation to perform a recoat over spliced fibres. Recoating is where a polymer, similar to the original fibres polymer coating, is restored to the region of glass around the splice. This helps to protect the glass from mechanical and environmental damage. Unlike rigid splice protectors, recoating maintains fibre flexibility. However, it should be noted that recoating a splice does not make the splice stronger. This is determined by the quality of the prepared fibres and the fusion splice joint. Recoating is carried out by loading the splice into the recoat mould. A UV acrylate recoat material is then injected into the mould. UV lamps then cure this material and form the recoat around the fibre. The recoat mould consists of two very flat quartz glass plates. There is a semicircular channel in both the upper and lower plates. When the lid is closed and the plates come together, these channels form a mould cavity of the required recoat diameter. Before performing a recoat, use a lint-free tissue and cotton-tipped applicators soaked in a solvent such as acetone or IPA to clean both the top and bottom mould plates. This will ensure that the surface of the plates and the channels are clean and free from debris and recoat material. The acrylate recoat material enters the mould via the injection port in the lid. The port is loaded with recoat material and this is then injected into the mould using either the injection screw plunger or a remote manual injection system. Whichever method is used, it is important that care is taken to avoid bubbles in the UV acrylate material as it is injected into the mould. Some people can develop a sensitivity to recoat material. For this reason, appropriate precautions should be taken when cleaning the mould or handling the material. Avoid contact with bare skin, avoid excess inhalation, and safely dispose of all wipes that have recoat material on them. There are several alignment holes around the recoat station that will accommodate the transfer jig. Note the metal platforms or bushings around each of these alignment holes. To perform a recoat, first open the lid of the recoat mould. Now move the tension splice from the splice station to the recoat station using the transfer jig. Do this carefully so that the splice cap or recoat mould lid are not knocked and slammed shut. Place the pins of the transfer jig on the bushings around the mould so that it is raised slightly off the top surface of the unit. Load the fibre into the recoat station by positioning the pins on the underside of the transfer jig over the alignment holes. Now gently lower the transfer jig so that the fibre lies in the lower channel of the mould and the transfer jig is resting on the top surface of the unit. There are magnets in the lid of the mould to hold it shut. Gently close the lid so that the fibre lies in the cavity created by the channels in the upper and lower plates. Inject recoat material into the mould using either the remote manual injection unit or the injection screw plunger. As material is injected, the length of the recoat can be monitored through the viewport in the lid of the recoat mould. Recoat material should be injected slowly, allowing time for the material to flow along the channel. The length of the recoat should be such that it covers all the bare glass and overlaps the coating on either side of this region by a few millimetres. The cure process can be started by pressing the recoat button on the machine. When this is done, the UV lamps under the mould will light and remain on for the cure time. The cure time can be set in the software. To remove the recoat from the mould, first open the lids of both the left and right fibre holding blocks. Then, carefully open the lid of the recoat mould. There may well be some extra resistance due to the viscosity of uncured recoat material. The recoated fibre may be attached to either the top or the bottom mould plate. Lift on one side of the fibre and gently peel the recoated fibre out of the channel. The recoat mould now needs to be cleaned thoroughly so all the excess recoat material is removed. 
First dry wipe with a lint-free tissue to remove as much material as possible from the top and bottom plates. Then, using a soft applicator soaked in a solvent such as IPA or acetone, clean off any remaining recoat material. Reliable and repeatable performance of the recoating procedure is highly dependent on the integrity and cleanliness of the mould.